Well, if the prospects uh, for young people in this country are bleak, imagine what it must be like elsewhere in Europe. In Spain, for example, youth unemployment is running at getting off of 50%. The world the young were educated for no longer exists, and that is before the Euro crisis comes crashing through the door like some out of control juggernaut. Joe Lynham has more. What started off as a Greek problem has turned into a full blown European crisis. But are politicians in Europe using a pea shooter instead of David Cameron's weapon of choice, a big bazooka? One thing's for sure, unless the big guns arrive, the whole shooting gallery will collapse. Financial markets are convinced that Europe's weaker economies simply won't be able to repay all their debts. And in an effort to do exactly that, European governments have slashed their deficits and forced millions onto the dole queues. Of the three countries already getting a bailout from the IMF and the EU, unemployment has soared. Portugal has 12% out of work, Ireland 14%, but that's rampant job creation when compared to Spain's almost 21% unemployed. So how does Portugal, with its debt mountain of 93% of national income, hope to repay all its debts? I was in the opposition when the external uh, assistance programme was asked and negotiated, and I stand it in favour of, the, of, the, of that programme because I knew how the situation was uh, extremely difficult for my country. And uh, one of the difference of the Portuguese story is we have a large political consensus in Portugal about this program and its obligations. 85% um, of the members of parliament, despite the difference you can have between government and the opposition, uh, are in favour of the memorandum we signed as a state with uh, IMF and European institutions. So this is a large consensus. Unemployment in the United Kingdom is now at around 8%. My guess is that Portuguese government would love that level of yes. unemployment. Yes, it's true. I would love to have that uh, unemployment level. The Eurozone would love if it only had an unemployment crisis. Apart from millions of people out of work, there's a banking crisis, and many of Europe's largest banks simply may not survive. Then there's the issue of where does the growth come from? Even Europe's strongest economy, Germany, has spluttered to somewhat of a stall in the last few months. And then there's political paralysis. There doesn't seem to be any way for European leaders to get around the table and agree a way forward. And that is what... President Barroso at least is hoping to alleviate. To that end, the EU Commission President was hoping today to put a proverbial bomb under Eurozone leaders, i.e. France and Germany, to solve the crisis. The strategy should comprise five key steps. It should include all potential systemic banks identified by the European Banking Authority across all member states. It should take account of all sovereign debt exposure in full transparency. It should involve a temporarily higher capital ratio after accounting for exposure. Banks that do not have the required capital should present and then implement plans to have it in place as swiftly as possible. And until they have done so, they should be prevented from paying out dividends and bonuses by the national supervisors. Three years ago, Europe's government spent billions, nay, hundreds of billions, bailing out their banks. And that prevented a financial crisis turning into an outright depression. The problem three years later, as we face another financial crisis, is that the government simply don't have the money. So when the IMF and now the European Commission suggests another round of mass recapitalizations, who's going to pay for that? Where's the capital going to come from? Does it come from the private sector or does it come from the public sector? The Germans have said, look, we'll stand behind our banks. The French have said, well, actually, um, we're not quite sure we can stand behind our banks, but if someone else could help us out, that'd be great, because if the French do it on their own, they're going to lose their AAA rating. If they lose their AAA rating, then, you know, the EFSF can't gear itself up from $400 billion to $2 trillion. And if you don't have a massive bailout fund, affectionately known as the EFSF, you won't have the big bazookas to take on the markets, which have taken on huge bets that the Eurozone can't or won't put its money where its mouth is. 
in many ways, the banks are the cause and the cure in this now, the second financial crisis. In the boom times, governments borrowed from banks, gave the money to taxpayers, and they hoped would get re-elected. Now, though, the banks want their money back and the governments don't have the money. So perhaps if the banks consider writing off vast swathes of that debt, that would get the governments off the hook. The only problem is that will collapse many of the banks. Is it fair that many countries are talking about Greece having a write-off or haircut of around 60% of its debts when Portugal has to repay 100% of its debts? I will give you a diplomatic answer. We are focused on our programme. Fulfill our commitments, honor our word, and if we do it, we'll do our job. Um, and um, I think this will be recognized by markets and international community. And what's the undiplomatic answer? Mm -hmm. What's the undiplomatic answer? Look, you have to wait. <laughs> So over the coming weeks, are Eurozone politicians prepared to lengthen dole queues, strangle growth and risk their own jobs to preserve a currency which was constructed in another era by a very different group of leaders?